Hi guys, welcome to the video on expressing concentration. Um, this is going to be the background of um, our calculations portion of solutions, um, and this is out of 13.4 in your book. In this video, we're going to focus on all of the different ways to calculate concentration. So concentration can be expressed either qualitatively or quantitatively. So we've talked about solutions in the qualitative manner. So we talked about saturated, unsaturated, supersaturated. Um, that's all qualitative. Another way that we could talk about concentration being qualitative is either dilute or concentrated. We're just giving a word to describe concentration. Um, or we can use it quantitatively, which means we put numbers to it. That's when we actually calculate something, and that could be mass percent, parts per million, molarity, all of those. So the first way that we could calculate um, concentration is percent by mass, um, and this is one of the simplest quantitative expressions. Um, it's sometimes called percent by mass or mass percent. Um, percent just means out of 100. So that's why we have the times 100 over here. All we're doing to find mass percent is we're taking the ratio. So we take the ratio of a component. So typically it would ask for the solute. So we take the mass of the solute divided by the total mass. And because it's a percent, we multiply it by 100. Um, Sometimes it could ask for the solvent. If that's the case, you take the mass of the solvent over the total mass of solution. In any case, um, you just take the mass of what you're trying to find divided by the total mass of the solution times 100. Um, for example, if it was 36% HCl by mass, that means you have 36 grams of HCl in 100 grams of water, or excuse me, of solution. So 36% HCl would be 36 grams of HCl in 100 grams of solution. Um, you could do the same thing if you want percent by volume. Instead of mass, it would just be volume. Um, then we have parts per million and parts per billion. Um, this is still relating the mass of um, one component to the mass of the solution, but this is typically used for very dilute solutions. Um, so instead of being a percent, if it's parts per million or PPM, um, that means you're multiplying instead of by a hundred by a million and then parts per billion you're multiplying by one times ten to the ninth which is billion um, if a solution was then one ppm one part per million that means it would be one gram of solute per one million grams of solution so notice that it's a very very dilute solution um, mole fractions are the same as when we looked at it in chapter 10 when we looked at gases. Um, the mole fraction is simply the ratio of one of the substances compared to the total number of moles in solution. It's represented by what looks like an X, but it's actually the Greek letter chi, and so it's almost like an italicized X. So this is mole fraction. Um, again, it's moles of, of A or moles of whatever component over total moles of solution. Notice that moles will cancel. You have moles over moles, so mole fraction has no unit okay, because they cancel out. The sum of mole fractions of all of the components in a solution has to equal 1. So if you took every single fraction, right, all the decimals have to add up to equal 1, just like all the percents have to add up to equal 100%. In some applications, you might have to find the solvent, not the solute, on the top. So just make sure that you're reading the question very carefully and you're finding the quantity that you need. So reading the question is very, very important. Uh, then we have molarity, which is represented by a capital M. Um, you should have calculated this in Chapter 4, which was the summer work, as well as last year. So molarity is just moles of solute over liters of solution. Um, Mm. Molarity is very useful um, whenever you're looking for solute compared to solution. Uh, but units are extremely, extremely important throughout. Make sure that you give me moles of whatever on top, liters of solution on bottom. So you should always have moles over liters. Um, always show your units. Always make sure units cancel and everything. Remember that we talked about molarity, but we also did dilutions, which is also important. Um, and for dilutions, that's your M1V1 equals M2V2. So this is also important because 
not only do we want to deal with concentrated solutions, but you also want to make sure that you can dilute solutions down using the dilution formula. And notice down here, um, volume can change. If temperature changes, volume can expand or contract. So molarity can actually change with temperature. Then we have molality. Molality will be used a lot when we look at colligative properties in the next video. The difference between molarity and molality is that molarity depends on the volume of solution. Right? If you notice down here, molarity is liters of solution on the bottom. Molality is dealing with only the solvent. It's dealing with the mass of solvent on the bottom. So if you want to calculate molality, you take the moles of the solute over kilograms of solvent. Notice there's no solution anywhere. Solute over solvent. Um, and <clears throat> with molality, since both moles and mass do not change with temperature, and moles nor mass change with temperature, uh, molality is not temperature dependent, which means molality is often the unit of choice for concentration when you're dealing with solutions that um, <clears throat> are used over a wide range of temperatures. So here's just a table that summarizes all of the concentration calculations or, or the equations that we've looked at. Um, remember, concentration is how much solute is dissolved in a certain amount of solvent. Um, and you also, along with these, have the dilution formula. Dilution formula doesn't really have an abbreviation, but um, the equation is your M1V1 equals M2V2. Now changing molarity to molality. If we know the density, we can calculate molality from molarity and vice versa. Um, but you must know the density. Once you know the density, you're just going to use dimensional analysis. And we'll do some examples in class where you're just using dimensional analysis to convert all of your units.